Hello everyone and welcome to our video on the new student visa requirements in Australia. I'm Anakshi Vasa, Vertical Head Australia New Zealand, connecting with you all from Sydney. If you're one of those students who have been hearing about these changes, but still not sure what it all means, then this video is for you. Today, we'll be discussing the recent changes to the student visa requirements that came into effect from March 23rd, 2024. The updates are essentially in two parts. One is the English language requirement and the second is the transition from the genuine temporary entrant that is GTE requirement to the genuine student that is GS requirement. These changes are significant and have implications for all students planning to study in Australia. So let's learn more on each topic. Let's first discuss the updates on the English language requirement. The English language requirements for student visas in Australia has been updated, increasing from IELTS 5.5 to 6 or equivalent for general student visa applicants. If you are planning to study a foundation standard or extended program, the English language requirements have also increased to IELTS 5.5 or equivalent. For those students who intend to take any course before their main course of study, the IELTS score has increased from 4.5 to 5.0. It's important to note that you must have completed the English language requirement test within two years before your visa application is launched or before a decision is made on your application. Please bear in mind that the new English language requirements apply to all student visa applications lodged on and after the 23rd March 2024. So it's crucial to be aware of these new requirements. Now let's move on to the new student gen uh, genuine student requirement updates. The genuine temporary entrant, that is GT requirement, has been replaced by the genuine student requirement, that is GS. The focus of the GS requirement is to ensure the applicants genuinely intend to study uh, in Australia on a student visa. This change reflects a shift in focus towards compliance and stricter monitoring after students enter Australia. It's essential to understand these changes and how they may impact your visa application. Now let's understand what the genuine student, that is GS requirement entails. The GS requirement aims to assess the genuine intent of students to study in Australia. This requirement replaces the former 300 word statement with a list of targeted questions, providing a clearer picture of the applicant's background and motivations for studying in Australia. There are four main questions to answer with a maximum of 150 words per question. An extra question is included for applicants who have previously held a student visa or those applying from a non-student visa while in Australia. Now let's dive into these four questions. The first question is about the applicant's current circumstances. Applicants need to provide details on their current circumstances including ties to family, community, employment and economic circumstances. The visa officer will explore your current circumstances back home considering aspects such as family connections, spouse, children, parents who reside in your home country, your employment situation, and financial standing. Having strong connections to your home country, such as owning property or having a study, steady job, indicates a high likelihood of returning home after finishing your studies. In this section, applicants need to provide reasons for not studying in their home country if a similar course is available. The next question in the visa application form is explain why the applicant wishes to study this course in Australia with this particular education provider. This must also explain their understanding of the requirements of the intended course and, uh, course and studying and living in Australia. Your selected course of study will undergo thorough examination. Visa officers are looking for a clear link between your academic history, the chosen course, and your career aspirations. Demonstrating a logical progression from your existing qualifications to the chosen course strengthens your application. Have you opted for a program directly aligned with your prior studies or is there a compelling reason for a change in focus? This section would allow you to outline your academic path and future objectives. Please be mindful that the word limit is 150 words for each section. So keep your responses concise and to the point. Now the third question is explain how completing the course will be of benefit to the applicant. In this section, the application will be scrutinized on the fact whether the course matches your 
current education level and if it can help you find a job or open up better opportunities back home or anywhere else. It would also be considered if the course relates to your past or future job plans in your home country or elsewhere. You may research on the salary and other perks you might expect to get in your home country or anywhere else with the qualifications you will earn from, you'll earn from this course. Now the fourth question is to give details of any other relevant information the applicant would like to include. In this section, you get the opportunity to include any information that you believe would be relevant to your visa application. Here, you may explain about study gaps if you have any. You may also want to include your visa and travel history for Australia and other countries. Do mention if you have had any previous visa applications for Australia or any other country including visa refusals or cancellations. Please do note that the GS requirement came into effect from Saturday, March 23rd. So any student visa application made before that date would fall under the previous, that is the old requirement. Any student visa application made on and after March 23rd would be assessed under the new GS, that is a genuine student requirement. So how can you demonstrate that you indeed have genuine student, um, genuine intentions of studying in Australia? Well, first of all, do your research well. Opting for a course that perfectly matches your academic and career objectives reflects a sincere enthusiasm for Australian education. Conducting thorough research into the institution's reputation, faculty proficiency in your um, field of interest, and course content signifies a well-considered choice. However, only research or answering the visa questions are not sufficient. You need to provide supporting documents to strengthen your visa application. Gather comprehensive and neatly arranged documentation to support your application. This should include academic documents such as transcripts and certificates, evidence of meeting the updated English language proficiency requirements, and documents that validate your connections to your home country, and financial security. It's really important to demonstrate that you have enough money to support yourself while you are studying in Australia. You'll need to show that you can cover your tuition fees, living costs which have gone up lately, and even health insurance. You can use documents such as bank statements, letters confirming scholarships, or documents showing financial support from sponsors as evidence. Now, there has also been another development that was announced recently. The Australian government has announced changes to the post-study work visa requirements as well, which would take effect from 1st July 2024. According to this, the post-study work stream will be renamed to the post-higher education work stream. Under this, bachelor degree holders, including honours, can get up to two years of post-study stay. Masters by coursework and extended can stay up to two years. And masters by research and PhD holders can stay up to three years. But there is good news for Indian students, as they largely remain unaffected by these changes due to the Australian-Indian Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement signed by the two countries. According to which, Indian students who complete bachelor's degree, including honours, can stay up to two years. Bachelor's degree with first-class honours in STEM, including ICT, can stay up to three years. Masters by coursework, extended and research can stay up to three years. And PhD students can stay up to four years. The maximum age for applicants have been now reduced to 35 years of age or under for all applicants. Well, with this, I would like to conclude our video for today. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you're unsure um, on the process or still have questions on how to proceed, then please feel free to contact our counselors at Global Reach. Our counselors are very well versed with the new regulations and can navigate you through the new changes. We wish you all the best with your application to study in Australia and look forward to welcoming you soon here. Thank you so much for your time.